why you started the Hustler Company, what was the good and bad, and how it all shook out. Well, it, it ha- the Mustard Company sort of has two stories. One of, the, one of the stories is that my father's sister, when she was 17 years old, decided she had to become a ballet dancer. Um, and my grandparents had apoplexy. She was a debutante. They were very snobbish. They, they just thought that it was awful to think of becoming a ballet dancer. But she finally convinced them that she was going to run away from home if, she, if they didn't send her to ballet school. Wow. So they found out what the best ballet school in New York was, which was the Shalif School of Dance on West 57th Street. And she went to her ballet lessons with the upstairs maid carrying her ballet shoes every day to New York City. And the thing that my grandparents had not had the foresight to even consider was that she fell madly in love with her dancing instructor, who was the oldest son of Louis Chalif. And Louis Chalif had been, he was the ballet master, he had been the ballet master to the Tsar, and had escaped Russia with with, um, the Russian army in hot pursuit. He took his ballet troupe to Germany, he hopped on a boat and came to America, And within a year, he was able to send for his wife and their two babies, and they escaped with Cossacks in hot pursuit and made it to New York. And he he became the choreographer for the Metropolitan Opera. He became the foremost ballet master in the United States. And my aunt and uncle um, met secretly for four years because my uncle was on the Wicked stage. He was an immigrant. He was Jewish, he was a ballet dancer, and he was all of the things that my grandparents thought was, were absolutely forbidden for my aunt. He was blacklisted. And they lived <laughs> happily after, exactly. ever after. When they finally married, they lived happily ever after. And they had um, a recipe, my grandma, Shal- we, we call her grandma, Shal- even, even though she wasn't our grandma. Um, she had a recipe for mustard among many other things that she had sewed into the lining of her coat. And everybody loved her mustard. And when I married Nick, he just fell in love with my aunt and uncle's mustard that they made for people at Christmas time. And finally, my uncle got tired of making mustard for everybody. And so he (laughs) called us to his house and said that he would be happy to teach us how to make this secret recipe if we would be willing to make it for the family from then on so that he wouldn't have to bother. And he said if we ever wanted to market it, he would finance us. Wow. Well, Nick, Nick had a, was the regional um, general manager for a large insurance company. He had become very involved in the early stages of defined benefit programs. Mm-hmm. And he was working with the Penn Dental School primarily. and. Um, a company lured him away, Pete Musser's company actually, um, lured him away to start a new company with everyone else in the, starting the company was independently wealthy except for us. Mm-hmm. But they were offering him twice the salary, company car, stock in the company, and it was an offer he couldn't refuse <laughs> because he was being recruited for his insurance expertise and especially with defined benefit programs and so these this group entertained 30 to 40 doctors and their wives because they were a natural market for a defined benefit program Mm -hmm. and um, we went to a very fabulous gourmet restaurant called L'Auberge in in, um, Wayne three nights a week giving seminars for 30 or 40 doctors and their wives the company ran out of money six months down the road because they hadn't really planned as well as they should. <laughs> they decided to discontinue all executive salaries on the day that Vicky's first tuition check for Villanova arrived. Oh my God. Not a cheap school. And they, had, they had four children and all of them were, had been in private school. It was a nightmare. And so Nick kept working for that company because it seemed like it was going to be successful Mm -hmm. for no salary. And we went through all of our savings. My mother started paying our mortgage. Um, it It was a disastrous time. 
And we were finally down to our last $200, literally, in, in liquid cash. We had used up all of our savings. We were in the kitchen, I was doing the dishes, Nick was trying to pay the bills. And the electric bill and the phone bill were both for more than $300. And we had $200 in liquid cash. And I said, Nick, I keep telling you, we need to start making the mustard. Nick's mother had died earlier. I kept feeling that she was telling me it was time to make the mustard. Mm -hmm. So Nick finally slammed his hand down on the table and he said, okay, I, I can't fight you and my mother who had died. <laughs> um, I can't fight you and my mother. We'll, we'll take this last $200 in savings. We'll get your brother to design a label, but I want you to know I'm not putting one more penny into this other than this. And I said, okay, let's do it. So my brother designed a label. We bought mustard. The, we bought the mustard that we needed in little cans this size at supermarkets. Mm -hmm. we, <laughs> we went to sell our first jar of mustard to, the, to a, a store called Cheese Please in Chestnut Hill. Mm -hmm. It was 10 days before Christmas. She said, my God, it's 10 days before Christmas. Come back in January. And Nick said, would you please just be willing to taste this mustard and tell me if you think we have a viable product? Mm -hmm. And so very reluctantly, she, she dipped her finger into our precious jar of mustard, <laughs> put it on her tongue, said, Marge, come here. Marge came there, dipped her finger, and then she said, we'll take two cases. And we said, um, well, our cases are 24 to a case, because that's all we could find down on 2nd Street. Yeah. And are you sure you really want two cases because they're packed 24 to a case, not 12? She said, I said I want two cases. And so we walked out to the car, brought in our entire inventory to cheese please. We asked if we could go home and get our camera so we could take a picture of us buying it. She said, fine, we did that. And from that day forward, no one turned us down for at least a year. We wow. got into some the top gourmet stores in New York, um, in all all around the Philadelphia area. It was the beginning of the big build up of the gourmet mustard, the gourmet product industry. Right. And within a year, we had won the national award for the best gourmet product of the year. Wow. It was it was an amazing beginning, wow. with us knowing absolutely nothing <laughs> about running a company or about the specialty food industry. Mm -hmm. So that's how we started. <laughs> wow, that's pretty, that's a lot to handle there. Yeah. We started with czars and got to awards. Yeah, I was gonna say, one place we shouldn't be is speechless on the podcast, but I don't know where that's ballet going. Shoe, the ballet shoe story gave us a lot of publicity right, yeah. from the very beginning. People loved the, the story. And yeah. so that, that's awesome. we got a lot of publicity. and. I'll, and I don't want to do all the talking, but I'll just tell you our major marketing effort in the beginning was going to New York, um, asking for Shalif mustard. No one had ever heard of it. Mm -hmm. um, my cousin helped us do that too. Mm -hmm. And then a week or two later, Nick and I would walk in with, in business attire and ask to speak to the manager and say that we had a wonderful mustard. And, oh, somebody was asking for that. Oh, one. really? <laughs> yes. That was our major marketing marketing um, <laughs> method and we we got into Zabar's which is the top yeah. famous gourmet deli in New York and became the, the best selling condiment as we grew at Zabar's for the next until the end of the company. That is crazy. It was. What was the what was the name of the mustard company? It was called Shalif. Shalif. The last name of the Russian ballet master. Wow. Yeah. It's an unbelievable story. 